Welcome to season three of the Minority Report podcast. Welcome, everyone. This is the Cabo special for the Minority Report podcast. I just want to let everyone how we're feeling. How are you feeling, guys? Yo, bro, I'm feeling pretty good. I've been waiting for so long to get to the beach. I'm just finally glad we're here. Bro. Now we're with our friends. It's been a relaxing week. Yeah, yeah. Cody's sure. been hitting different for the past, what, a year and a half now? A year and a half. Finally got to us, like be in person, get all Zoom, talk to each other, like about this podcast. It's been amazing. Yeah, it's been hella long since I saw you guys in person. For real, bro. it's been over it's a year. So far, talking like, to a screen, like, like two years, bro. Since that one week right before spring break, we had like a, a, a get together party after everybody finished midterms, and we never came back. The longest like midterm vacation ever. So we yeah. we decided like yeah, just come down here to Cabo, Cabo San Lucas here in Mexico, and we're just trying to. Have some fun, and we're also trying to record an episode just to highlight, like in person, and just talk about not only like the trip, uh, talk about what we want to do here, what season three going to consist of, and just a bunch of other different things. Sir, yep, that's right. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm actually really excited about all the shit we gotta do, because we've only been here for two days. We, we did most of our errand stuff. That's out of the way, so now we can just focus on the fun part. No. It feel like a week or two weeks, bro. I don't know. It's I don't know. Yeah, it's felt like a long time, especially for me, because I've been doing a lot of the shit. You know, Dang. one of the few people here. Bro, is I mean, Spanish. you keep everything in. Yeah, yeah, but you keep it all under control, bro. This man, this man is like he has old man tendencies, but like he did say like last season. I remember talking about scheduling everything in advance, like, and he was with it. It's we, been working. Yeah, pretty much have everything down, like it's routine and everything, and it gets to it. I was just. I'm happy it's not like, I, I don't know if people out there have been on vacation and then you have someone who's like, I don't know if they're a leader or whatever, but they're like, all right, 6 a.m., we're waking up for, uh, for this, yeah, this, yeah, this, that's this, too this, much. this, you have a set schedule. What do you mean that's, that's too much? You know, much. damn, well, you want to go hiking and see the birds and all that stuff? I know nobody else here wants to do that shit, so. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I'll be down to hike, but I'm not waking up at 6. No, I don't want to wake vacation. up at 6. I'm like, I'm like a Karen, like, if I don't have my morning coffee, don't talk to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> nah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much Wait, it. But, but I have a question for you guys, though. So yeah, yeah. What are we gonna do now that we know exactly how shit works because of COVID? Like in what sense? Like how we're gonna be moving in the streets? How we're gonna be moving like yeah. talking to people? What? Yeah. How we're gonna talk to people because now that we know that COVID has a lot of restrictions so on hold here, we gotta move different. I mean, you just can't be. The club's not the move. We just know that already. I'm yeah, sorry. that's not. It's about meeting people, interacting. But yeah. like, we haven't interacted with people for like what a year. We used to like swipe yeah. it. I mean, some of y'all still can I, swipe Can I it. shake your hand? Yeah. Do I hug you? Yeah. It's weird. Nah, bro. Elbows. Elbows. <laughs> still elbows, bro. The, the foot tap. I don't know. I mean, like, we're lucky enough that we were able to get uh, fully vaccinated before we came out here. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's also to be respectful to the people that are, like, locals, because, like, Americans have a back track record, especially certain Americans. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say no names. Like, spreading diseases to foreign countries and killing off a bunch of people. So, I mean, it's preach. I mean, we just gotta be respectful about like locals and like their restrictions and maintaining that. Cause like, there, we already heard stories from locals that have said like, we've tried to help out some Americans and they'll be like, why do I gotta wear a mask? Why do I gotta do this down here? And it's like, what it's a liberal bro, hoax. COVID hoax, liberal hoax. It's it's like, like, get this liberal hoax off liberal. my face. <laughs> so it's like, bro, we just gotta be respectful to people here. Cause I know if foreign, when we get tight when foreigners like breathe our air when they're in America. So we just gotta, it's gotta be decent, bro. Can't be doing all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but for the people out there, what can we expect for season three? Since we kind of just talked about the trip, what can we expect for this season, bro? I feel like this is gonna mm. be a dope season, just taking like what we learned from both seasons, collecting it, hearing feedback, and then like just having video, which everyone wanted to have, and us doing it, having them be able to set it up was amazing. So, what else can we, you do think like you could give to people just so they know what's gonna happen in season three? Definitely some more fire interviews. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff in that regard. You know, we want to not only keep asking our, our friends to come on the pod, but we're thinking of getting some some famous guests yeah. to participate and too. And yeah. professionals. Yeah, in different yeah. fields. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, when we had the, the bank one, bro, I don't know. It blew my mind, some of the stuff that came to banking and finances and all that stuff and getting to know where to put your money, how to put it, when to put it, all that kind of stuff. So if we can get that on a bigger level, have more professionals, you know, um, tell us about mental health, which we definitely have to get to mental health. Um, 
just other topics like that for sure. We hit a lot of our friends. Um, yeah, we got plenty of more though. Plenty yeah. more f- friends to come on the pod. So yeah, you know, just keep an eye out for that. Maybe for yourself, because you might come on the pod too. It's a person listening. Damn, <laughs> staring right at the camera. We need right you face bro, that. You're, right there. you're coming on the pod, whether you like it or not. Nah, but no, I know our dating one's been hidden, so I feel like we have to get more into the dating relationship world as well. Yeah, yeah I just feel like, uh, in terms of dating, like we have so many different perspectives like that we still want to discover, but just the, just the very simple like male and then you have know, female perspective coming on and talking about how they see things and how they and how we see things and then like cross-examining things i think it was great i think like the last episode we did season two i think hit off with the bang or set off with the bang was just like all right this is like how we communicate of course it's a little bit general but how they communicate each person shares their own experiences we share ours and then we cross-examine because then you'll be like all right maybe y'all maybe y'all are taking this because y'all take like hints to heart and we don't or we do certain things like that mm-hmm. so having that dynamic of like hearing different perspectives i think is what's really like the coolest part of those type of episodes which i hope like and i'm pretty sure we're going to be able to do this season it's going to be dope so yeah that, that that to me was like the coolest thing we're able to find finding our groove finding the people that want to hear us and that's been like the dopest thing hearing a bunch of feedback so and yeah honestly i have to give thanks to all the people who gave us feedback throughout the season both actually both the first and the second season we would not have improved as much as we did mm-hmm. if it weren't for you guys yeah. because you know there's only so much that we can tell by watching or by listening to our own podcast yep. we want to have you guys interact with us as much as possible because in the end this is also i mean this is for us too like we're doing it because we like it we have fun but we want to do it for them yeah because, for the viewers. For the viewers. Yeah, because it's fun to create content for other people mm-hmm. yeah for sure like i think when you when you're able to hear someone say like oh this is what i thought about this episode and they actually were like give you not even critiques, just like that they listen and then they tell you about like their favorite parts or what they thought about this or how they would want to come on and talk about it is like a shot of adrenaline because it keeps you like wanting to do it. Because I know a lot of people have wanted to do podcasts like and have even come on and then they try to do their own thing and it's like you get burned out very quickly because like if you're always talking about things, you feel like you're not enough things to talk about and then like no outside you know, perspective yeah like saying yo this is uh and then and then if yeah and then if you don't feel like you're hearing feedback like it's a lot of like you feel like what's the point but i yeah, feel like it feels like you're talking to a wall yeah mm-hmm. i feel like we've had a great support system like behind the scenes so I've, that have been like hey like this is what i would do this is what i wouldn't do or this is what or i, I want to hear or this is what i want to hear so like i think from that just fine tuning it and doing that has helped like podcast i think a lot so it's been it's been really yeah. fun and to be fair, we also started this season off with a bang. We got all those skits out of the way. You know, that was pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, y'all gonna enjoy some of these joints, bro. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, think I have some of my favorites already, but I want to hear what everybody else <laughs> And I'll be honest, like, I have my favorites. But, yeah, it's gonna be... <laughs> Me too. It's gonna be, it's gonna be dope, like, just this season, I think, entirely. Just to hear what we do, what we're able to say, and who comes on. I think it's gonna be really dope. So, you and that camera lens, listening. Watching. <laughs> yeah, zoom in on boy's face. Nice yeah. And close. You're you're next. You're coming on. <laughs> you're next. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. No, but a lot of stuff coming for season three. Um, we're gonna do as much as possible, also because we have a lot of shit coming on later on in our personal lives. We're all moving different places, starting new chapters, and we just gotta make the most of our time while we can yep but yeah you know anyways i want to switch the topic a little bit what you got back to the vacation stuff mm-hmm. you know we got a party boat coming up yes sir we got a party boat coming up real soon what are y'all thinking about it i I'll think i'll go first i, I got think some crazy if, takes i think if uh i think if certain individuals from our friend group make it back alive it's a good night because <laughs> <laughs> the way people, yeah. the way people have been moving, bro. I don't know if people can. Can everyone swim? Can you swim? Uh, bro, you saw me swim to the buoy and back. Oh, low key, yeah. The one, you I'm the only person. Nah, 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 real quick, the this man was also Navy SEAL. Like they're like here in the beach in Cabo. There's like, I guess they do for safety, of course. But there's like a, a, a thing you can't cross, and it's yeah. far out in the ocean. This man was like, okay, I'm gonna swim there and back real quick, like nothing. Just you would just see him on the waterfall and then bloop. Oh, boom, down, boom, 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 boom. up, down. And I'm like, bro, you doing that? That's a, a different kind of swimming. When are you going to swim? 
Uh, I don't know, dude. When I was a little kid, that's one of the things my mom really wanted me to learn very young. Mm -hmm. She put me and my sister on swimming lessons before I could even remember. You seen that video of the baby that just gets thrown in the water? I was just That kid gets yeah. dunked in like he's, like he's a nugget going into sweet and sour sauce. Just boom, just gets dunked into that. And, that, and I was like, what the hell is going on? But I guess like it's really good, especially because like I feel like more and more people are trying to have pools or like yeah inflatable pools in the house. Like yeah. the scariest thought is like your kid just falls in there. Yeah, know? yeah. I was actually talking to one of the people that has the English classes with me and he said he had that fear for his, his little girl because his little girl's like five yeah. years old when they have a pool. And even though the pool has a cover, even though the like the actual pool area has a a little fence thing with a lock. He says, you know, one day she could climb over and fall in and she doesn't know how to swim, she's gonna drown. I know what's yeah. gonna know. Jay Z said he didn't learn to swim until he had blue, because then the thought of him like not being able to save his daughter was like yeah. keeping him up there. Yeah. Bro, this man got billions of dollars. You can hire someone to wash or whatever shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but of course there's gonna be some days where you just wanna hang out with your child and then imagine they go in like and then you're like at that point where you're just watching your kid drown. Like that's is that father that's instinct kicking in? Like, that's the thing. So that's why he was talking about how he had to learn how to swim once like their, 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 their daughter was born. On the party boat, that's a little bit different because when you're inebriated, that is true. You're yeah. able to learn or to you do the stuff you used to do. Swimming. Although, are we gonna be going in the water? That's the question. No. I mean, if you're drunk, you're gonna go in the water. No, I don't even know if they have it like open for people to go in the water because they're gonna be going deep. Yeah, you the boat goes you out into a much deeper water. water. And the oh, thing is, like, this gotcha, beach gotcha. is deep as fuck. Like, you go in 15 feet and it's already where you can't touch the bottom. Yeah, I'm just thinking about all those times. I was watching like the Sam Nacho and he was talking about cruises. Who? I saw Minaj. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was talking about, like, he had a yeah. show. He had a, on one of his shows, he was talking about, like, cruise ships. And he was talking about how people be falling off them damn cruises. Like, and over there. No, so bro, someone died. Someone, uh, a baby died. Like, this guy was holding his, uh, like, nephew or niece. And he was preoccupied. And the baby just fell off and died. Off yeah. the cruise? Off the cruise ship. And yeah. you know what, bro? The, the baby's going to die before it even hits the water. That's so high up. High up, yeah. Yeah. And At that also, point, the water is like concrete once you hit it. Yeah, and also they said, you were saying in the show, like, even in cruise ships, there's, like, no law. Like, people could get murdered and shit, and... What do you mean no law? It's international... No, 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 no. What was the... I, I searched it up. So, there's international waters, right? But the difference is that you follow the law of the country where the ship is... Uh, where the tax haven is. Because yeah. that's basically what they do. Yeah, no, you know, what they do is, like, they register the ship under a country with really lose labor laws yeah because it's cheaper and tax but those cheap. countries also have like other laws like drinking laws that's why whenever you get on a cruise and let's say you're 18 the cruise is registered under panama panama has a drinking age at 18. yeah that once the cruise leaves american waters and it's in international waters it follows the law of the country who where, where, the, where, where the where the ship is registered in. yeah so you follow panamanian law after that yeah he but he was talking about how like people have died and they weren't able to get like people, their families weren't able to get justice because there's like loopholes and shit that oh, yeah. I mean, cruise ships can do because they gotta make their money. I mean, the, the the whole business behind cruise ships. I mean, this is off it's topic. Crazy. It's like mooky, like yeah. it's bad. But I feel like you start to the more you start to learn, it's like that for almost every industry. Like there's like oh my fault. There's like a lot of uh, industries that just have a lot of mooky movements when it comes. Bro, to we've seen some other industries here. <laughs> we see them just walking around. Bro, it's a lifestyle. They gotta get the money somehow, bro. Oh yeah. yeah. Are you talking about the people selling stuff on the street? No, no. I'm talking about people saying like, "Yo, amigo, come over. I got you. Got you. Look, twenty dollars a head." And then they get it, and they get you into some place, and then it's actually sixty dollars a head. But they already got the money. And they dip out. Hey, bro. They, they got. I, I have. I don't feel any type of weight. They need to feed their families. Get anywhere. You That's can. what I'm saying. No, I plus, know. Plus, I know plus, plus, we took all their. We took. We took uh, California and Texas from them, so they can get get it how they they need to, bro. This is a slow yeah, way of paying them back. Yes, yeah, very, 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 very slow, slow way. way. Like, bro, Cabo. There's so many people that speak English because it's just Americans. Like, yeah, it's a lot of American here. tourists, a lot of Mexican like, tourists. Crazy. It's so funny that like if a a, a Mexican goes there to try to work, like in the U.S. It's, I mean, of course, there's like illegality and legality shit, but like people love coming here and doing whatever, and then they have someone that even goes there legally or whatever, and they're ah no, nah, they're doing this. Like, imagine if like the Mexican president started talking about Americans bringing in their rapists and the the 
the worst of the worst. What do you think would happen? I know that you're right though, because it's definitely like when you come here, it's like you feel like it's almost lawlessness now, right? You can do whatever you want for a to one extent, to one extent. Oh, of course, but there's still that feeling of lawlessness, like not necessarily not to like me, but maybe to like a college kid, kid that comes with his friends and comes here, like bro, more than lawlessness. I feel like it's just no rules in the sense of like, okay, if you're a college kid, like you said, you can drink. If you want to. Yeah. If you want to do drugs, you can find them easier, and there's a less lesser chance that you're gonna get caught. Shit like that, but it's not like it's complete lawlessness. Like this, I, honestly, I'm surprised by, by how well organized the city is, and it's very clean. Yeah, and I mean, there's reasons behind that. Stuff. It, everybody got everybody gets a cut to make money, and in Cancun I mean, yeah. here, like there's many reasons for what happens. But yeah, I'm just surprised. I'm not it's, it's very well maintained. You know, it looks nice. I don't know if it's out of surprise. I mean, if you have all the money funneling in from Americans into you, that's the top priority. To I don't know. It's like and around they stay America. in these pools. Talk about this ice cream cone is 10,000 pesos. Like, oh, okay, cool. And they give it to you. Meanwhile, it's what? Like 50 pesos? And they just give it to you. Like, I saw when I walk around here, bro, I, I don't I don't like talking in dollars and then I don't like talking in English. Bro, this man, no, no, no. you for the boat. Were you there with us? No, I wasn't. When this man was like, yo. Like, don't even give it to me on no... Gringo. I said, yeah. I said no man. No gringo, gringo price. Give me the no real prices. prices. Because the thing is, like, in the DR, is the exact same way. Like, I have a story, yeah. like, my sister-in-law, like, she's married... Well, of course she's married to her brother. But, like, she's white. And yeah. we were, like, in a in a really famous monument in the DR. And she was trying to buy, like, some memorabilia. And they were like, yo, it's, like, 40, like, American dollars. And my brother just heard and was like, bro, what are you on? Like... <laughs> He's like, I understand she's your wife, whatever, but like she gets charged as a foreigner. Like even yesterday, we went to go get umbrellas, and he was charging us like the equivalent of like like thirty dollars in pesos. And then me and Eddie started talking Spanish. He's like, oh, he's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I even I don't even tell him sometimes that I'm like from like the DR. I tell him I'm like from Alcapulco. I just find like a random city where I know <laughs> dark, dark people are from, and I tell him, oh yeah, I'm from there. Was he so, embarrassed, or do you just like keep going with it? Well, when we were talking to the umbrella guy? Yeah. Okay, no, he was just like... No, he's just like, oh, okay. He's like, oh, no, but for you, since you're like a, a, a local, it's like $7, like the equivalent of $7 in pesos. Because, bro, they... That's a dip from 30 to 7 Bro, because you... They, if, if I... If I say I... Like, let's like... The, the system that works is like, I'm going to give you this high price, yeah. and I'm going to negotiate down. But they already know that, like, the of the Americans, like, 25 to 50 are going to pay the set price, whatever. Cause because negotiation is seen as like a poor way of doing yeah. things in the United States. Yeah, so they're going to pay not that price. Just, they're not used to it. That's not Having a thing. to like barter, like if the car is this price, like alright. The, the well. price is the price that it is. Oh, it's yeah. never it's never a barter unless you're in like a, I don't know, like a used car. Mm -hmm. No, it's stuff like yeah, if you shit. sell it like on like, like the website and then you got to be in person, off road and stuff like that, shoe stuff. Like, yeah, there's bargaining, but you go to Walmart, people just buy their stuff at like chains and there's no... Well, I mean, yeah. Walmart as opposed to like a marketplace in the yeah. open. Yeah. Yeah. Because like I remember when I was uh, we went, when I went to a grandma's in Istanbul, like that's like the biggest mall in like the Middle East. It's huge. Mm -hmm. So then, all they do there is bargaining, except if it's like on like this very specific jewelry they were talking about. So I have like a, a white American friend who went, and they charged him like a hundred lira, which is like I don't even know what it was at the time because the dollar was close. But like I'm gonna just say for like example, he basically paid like seventy dollars, and he didn't bargain. He just set set for price. What? It was like a memorabilia of like Turkey, but it was like a mini like like mini statue, like or a mini thing of it of the mm -hmm. city. So he paid like let's say like ninety nine lira, and then he goes away. I come there and I'm speaking Turkish to the guy, and I'm bringing it down to like forty thirty lira, because <laughs> they know that that person is like he started me off with like the same thing, but I'm like, I'm not paying that. Yeah. Are you crazy? And there's like a part there's bargaining like. Like that's they the, know there's like a number they can't yeah. cross. Yeah, right? yeah. They, yeah. There's a there's a number that they know that they have to make that that the minimum they can sell to make profit. Yeah. And yeah. and they're they're gonna try their hardest to keep it there. I think that's like the biggest blessing of me going there and going by myself. Like when we we're doing the boat thing, I was like, bro, this is the set price. Even if like that's not what the other guy gave me, and if not, I'm walking away. Because mm -hmm. if you walk away, they're gonna try to like see like if they in their they're, minds they're, they're losing a customer. Yeah, they're recuperating like oh. So the, the, thing, the thing with all this shit too is that they know that there's a bunch of other people doing the same thing, selling the exact same shit. Yeah. For the the, the same prices. Yeah. So there's a point where they say, okay, no, I can't lose the customer. I need to get it. Yeah. I have to lower the price. Especially if they're telling you, hey, I'm looking at other stuff. I'm talking to other people like. Yeah. You know, hey, this person might actually get a deal from someone who's already made what they need to make for the day mm -hmm. and they're just trying to make some stuff off the top, like or the opposite of that. So it's like it's a game within a game. 
And like, I don't know. It's kind of better though, to be honest. You can like get like some really good deals. I think you just have to know. You just have to know the actual truth. Personally, I get tired of that so quick. Uh, Having to like work for it. Not even just work for it. Just having to like constantly barter with someone and say like, no, I know you're bullshitting me. Yeah. Just give me the straight price. I'm opposite. I love that. I wish there was more in the states. (laughs) <laughs> Everything is said, yeah. Because because the thing is, it's just you. It just depends Let's on the price. Cairo, dude. Uh, I mean, if, if I could move back to Istanbul and there wasn't a dictator in charge, most definitely I, that's where I would be. Uh, just well, chilling. don't don't worry about moving back. You can't move back anymore. Yeah, I can't even go back over there. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, don't even fly over the country. I don't even stop as a as a flight team. We're going somewhere. I don't even stop in Turkey. But no, like. I love that part. Like that's what I miss the most about when I used to go to like when I was in Turkey, you know, and, and coming here and going like in bargaining, because mm-hmm. that's not a thing you do in the states at all. It's very very rare. So that's, unless you're in a minority, because minorities are not minorities. Uh, I guess just born in general. I mean, unless you go to like mentality. A, yeah, unless you no, go to like no, a like, trader's village. Your American or culture, like you don't really see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like I like. Let's say that like part. for example, let's say you're driving around in the country and you stop by this little shack where someone is selling like fresh homemade apple pie you're right you don't you're not gonna see bargaining there they're gonna say like oh the apple pie is however many dollars per slice or however many dollars for a whole pie and that's it you just buy it when you believe the person that's the fair price and it's usually the fair price too it's never gonna be over overpriced nah, i don't know about that bro in comparison to a lot of other places yeah if if you're going like in by the states they're gonna a lot of the like let's say a, a chain or whatever they're charging at what they can make the most profit on. no no not a chain i'm talking someone who's on the side of the road selling i don't know if you get the best price they, they they're trying to make the, as much money as possible yeah what do you could well yeah i mean but it's weird to borrow with there with, with, with those places don't you think you don't you don't borrow you just don't you get it or you don't with those type of things but exactly. you gotta you know that, that here. but you gotta know the true price of what it what it costs yeah. like if someone's making apple pie and they're selling it to me for 10 and i know that it's actually five. Mm-hmm. I'm not paying the ten, so they're doing what they can to get profit, and rightly so. I don't. If you're doing your own labor and doing all that stuff, sell that whatever you want. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Do whatever. But if I'm not trying to buy it at like ten, then that doesn't necessarily mean that's like. I, if I, you just have to know the price of what thing is. Like just because it's on the it's on the side of the road doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the best price, in my opinion. Just from like what I've experienced, you just got to know stuff. You just got to know how much it is. Now that we gave you guys some economics and bartering lessons, what we got next? Honestly, you know what I think we should do more? Eat out. I, I know we want to save money and like we're spending money on groceries so we can eat here, but I want some good local food Bro, as well. it's been three days. I still ain't haven't had any Mexican food. That's on you. That's on you. We've had gorditas. Bro. All right, you had the... Okay, I mean... But that's why I had more... Good. That's why I had like more stuff though. It All wasn't right. just that. So you, check it out, though. So you could not see. And the tamales at the beach. Huh? The tamales at the beach. Oh, yeah, I said those slime. That shit was good, bro. But I the guess thing it is, is me then, my bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, the only thing about this is a great location, and, like, it kind of feels like we're in a foreign country, but it feels like I'm in Florida. But I think if I were just to walk down the road and start talking with people, it would feel like I'm... It's different. Yeah, deeper. Yeah. It's like the local... Yeah. Because I would... Five would, blocks that way. You'll yeah, I would want to, like, get, like, bro, abuel, abuelita made the, like, these handmade tortillas, which First is what I'm hoping we do on Sunday when we go on there. Inshallah, we go on those uh, ATVs. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and they got food for us over there. But, yeah, like, that's what I'm, I'm trying to be on. Like, watching, like, Anthony Bourdain go to countries, rest in peace, and just, peace. like... Yeah. Seeing that stuff and like being in other countries, the best is like the local homemade spots. So like, yeah, that's more what I want to see. But I also understand this is a little bit. Cabo is extremely tourist. Like Cabo San Lucas, mm-hmm. or like the part we're at right now, which is San yeah, Lucas. Yeah. 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 So it's more it's more touristy. But if we go to like down the road or close to the airport, it's most definitely going to be local spots. Even in Cancun, Can- Cancun's got that touristy part of the city, but it's also you know a fairly large city with a lot of locals. So if you go to the local part. It's like you're in any other city in Mexico. Yeah, and and that's not even like just foreign country. That's how it is in the states. That's, that's, that's like if you go to Me- if you go to New York City and try to buy a coke compared to like upstate New York, it's probably gonna be like a two dollar difference. So two dollars, two dollars between Bro, Manhattan if you go, and let's say you go to like uh buy like the towers, like the new one that they built, and you try to get a coke at like there at the tower or whatever, like at a, a bottle, they might charge you like two three dollars, and then you go to like upstate New York where it's like little bit more countryside you go to like a local gas station or whatever it might be a dollar that's a gas 50. station though but i see what you're saying though the, bro, what do you mean? Dollars, though. we just said like there's only chains in like 
in okay, the future. Okay, I, I was, I was like, thinking like you were you were saying like Venice Beach versus you know um, a lesser well known part of LA. Okay, yeah, that that might work too. It's just yeah. location. Like Istanbul is extremely, like Anaheim, you know, like like Venice Beach versus Anaheim. Yeah, yeah. This it's all de- it all depends on where you buy. Like same thing with like groceries, for example. There's just like a lot of variants. It's just not foreign countries. The same thing in the states. It's just like everything you buy. There's a like luxury tax sort sort of say on like where you're located. If you're located like let's say in LA, like you buy a coat, that maybe that fifty cents more on that coat is because you live there and people can make more money off of it so that's that tax because the, the cost of living is higher you have to pay i think it's included it's not a real thing but i'm saying like it's included in but it's a real thing you know? yeah it's a real thing not a real thing but yeah, yeah 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 yeah. i got you dude all right well enough about fucking talking about prices <laughs> no, enough for that bro. i've been having a headache about that so far so yeah let's, let's switch the topic a little bit bro what do you think is about to happen at the logan paul Oh yeah, the Logan Paul the sham. Flame Mayweather. Mm. You see the rules? No the rules. No judges. No official what? winner. There what? is knockdowns. Uh, what else? I think nah, it's like bro, eight. That's trash. Bro. I think like, it's that's like, not a boxing fight. Yeah. Dude, what did you think it I was? I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, like no, even like within the rules of it, it's not even a boxing fight. Oh. It's a qualified. It's just an exhibition of some weird sort. That's how it's. That's how all these fights have been, though. But not even no judges. I mean, I no can winner? see no judges part, but no winner, no winners. No official wild. winner. That's the that's the wackest no, part. No, but the thing is, I don't. The, the only thing I'm not understanding is there's no official winner, but there is knockdown. So if someone so gets get knocked, knocked out, out who's, yeah, it's just it's like, clear. oh nah, <laughs> we don't know, undecided. <laughs> yeah. But if I'm if I'm uh, uh what's it called Logan, I love no no judges. Yeah. Maybe not no. Wait, winner, how many no rounds? Judges. I think it's eight rounds of three. I might be wrong. Three minute rounds. Bro, I hope yeah. it's over in the first minute. Low key, just Logan Paul gets to knock the fuck out. I don't, I don't think Floyd can knock him out. You don't think so? Really? I don't know. You don't think so? You don't think? Because that Floyd style is. Wait, how like, much? How much does he weigh? Bro, Floyd weighs like 140, 150. This man is like two something, I think. That's like they they kept their weights like as they kept how their they weights are. like how they are. Wow. And well, I thought Floyd would have gone some weight since he retired. Nah, Floyd, Floyd. I mean, he's Floyd, retired, but that's his lifestyle. Bro. Floyd stays in the gym, and he has yeah. entourage always like cycling and shit. But and he just fought like a year and a half ago in Japan. This is the dude that, that was leaving the shit. club and say, "Yo, just drive the whip on the side of me. I'm gonna like jog home." Yeah. After leaving the club, so yeah. like this bro's lifestyle is just straight up. God damn. Him and, yeah. So it's like, you know, the weird thing for me is that not once in my life would I thought that I would be rooting for Floyd. Yeah, I mean, you would. That, I mean, you don't watch the boxing like that. But no, still, I know, but like everyone knows Floyd, right? Yeah, everyone yeah. knows who he is, and a lot of people have an opinion about him. Yeah, I'm one of those. I don't like him. Why? Because he's flashy. Yes, I hate that kind of a person. Yeah. And you know what? Like we we can talk about that too with when, with celebrities, but in general, I hate flashiness. Whenever you're you're a rich person, right? You're like flaunting your money and shit. Mm-hmm. Especially him, we he can't even read. All right, bro. Now you're disrespecting me, Rob. I think I think the biggest thing is like. Specifically for certain kinds of celebrities and artists, when you yeah. come from nothing or whatever, or you have to really like really work hard to get where you are, you feel like now you gotta really show people. Well, like, but also, I, yeah, yeah, I understand that part, but not everyone who comes from nothing ends up doing that. Yeah, you know, but a lot there's of also, don't. but you also have to factor in like yeah. there's also a very big side of the allure of being a celebrity or the allure of presenting yourself as that you are rich, that you have to flaunt these things, even if you're not as rich or even if you are rich, where you still have to flaunt like I have this for the image. I know the that's, brand that's the, is I the most that. important thing. I get people. the whole brand stuff because yeah. that's how a lot of people see it. A lot of people are the opposite of me. They're like, "Oh no, look how much money he has! Look at the car he got! All that shit." I get that part. The whole business aspect of being yeah. flashy, I totally understand. I don't agree with it, but I understand. Bro, Rick Ross it. says he buys this car, like he has this car, but this car is like an investment because then, like, if a company, like he said, for example, he bought, he, he's talking about like a car he bought on like, it's his podcast. He said, I bought this car, but this car isn't for, or for me, for just to drive around and disappear in value. Because the moment you get in a car and you drive it, it goes on in value. He said, mm-hmm. 
I bought this car because then then when I'm gonna be making these videos or, or, or like companies are trying to sponsor me, like they're gonna be like, oh, I want to see you in this car driving around with your, your my company's like name in your mouth or logo. Yeah. He has so like it, seventy cars. Though. Yeah, but he said all of that, all of that makes he I'm makes saying, the money dude, back. Isn't, isn't that a little excessive? That's excessive. I mean, no, it's, it's excessive. Business. It's excessive, of course. But he said to me, that, I mean, the thing is, like, I I just hate that kind of lifestyle. Period. Yeah. I hate it. I think it's the most useless way of spending your Bro, money when there's so many so poor like people the Mark in the world. Zuckerberg look? What's up? It's like the Mark Zuckerberg look? That's you? No, I don't I mean, know. I don't want to have to use him as an example, you know? Bro, he's what? He's a billionaire, right? For yeah, sure. but, but I'm he, saying but, like Mark Zuckerberg is... But the thing, the, the thing that he's not flashy... Well, he's not flashy in the terms, but people be like, oh, he be wearing Walmart shirts and jeans. It's, his clothes are expensive. You think so? Bro, I don't yes. Think, I don't think he cares. No, I don't. he doesn't care, but like the, the shirts that he wears, like, but it's not like... Like he's mm. wearing a white shirt. It's, it's not like basics. a Hanes. It's yeah, like a yeah. it's like a white Versace shirt okay, or like okay. a Louis Vuitton jeans. But they're very plain looking. Yeah, but they're just expensive. So I'll like, give you okay. I'll give you an example of someone like Roger Federer. This motherfucker is so always gonna be, pick some tennis dude. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. But y'all know who he is, right? Yes, yes. This guy is. I'm pretty sure he's the first or second richest person in tennis. And same stuff as a bunch of other athletes. He gets a lot of his money through sponsorship deals, yeah, that's commercials, that's that the all that stuff, right? Like that, but this guy is not flashy. I know he's got money. I know he has nice stuff, but he doesn't show it off. That's, that's just what him. I'm saying. And also, he might he he probably makes. I think. Let's say like, like you want to like have more money, even more so. He'll probably make more money if he was flashy, just on like if he was able to. Show off like, oh, I am making this money. His brand would be worth even more. But I guess for him, it's just like I'm set. I don't need anything else. The things like that, he himself, like he's not the kind of person who's gonna show it up. Bro, like Floyd makes money off him being flashy. Like this man said, like I think it was like five years after, not even. I don't know if it's five years since the Conor fight or the Pacquiao fight. But he said, bro, I haven't even cashed those checks in for those fights. Damn, that's insane, dude. Because because just him, bro. Floyd is like. Can you just of- give at least some of that away? Bro, but the thing is, we don't know if he does. Yeah, that's what I'm no, saying. No, no, you no, don't no. know that he's If not you want to flaunt your wealth, why don't you flaunt yourself giving it away? That's true. To an extent, but I that might... to an extent that's also good. Yeah, you know? it, it can make no, it, it, it honestly depends on like how how you're perceiving, like how you want to be perceived by others. Honestly, because we don't know behind the scenes what he's doing. I'm not saying he is or he isn't, but there's also like a corniness that he they might try to avoid, where it's like. Hi, I'm giving the people. Like I mean, of course, all, yeah. All the of course, me, of course, me, the, the, the car is corny as shit too. Yeah, but of course, of, of course. Yeah, but but there's him, not that many people like me. Yeah, but at the end of the day, even if there's a lot of people to you, there's a brand being built where he's like, oh, this guy it has money. A company's gonna be like, all right, bro, uh, I want you to wear like this like suit uh, that we need that we made for you. Wear it, and then he's building bread off his uh, people's perception that he makes money. But also, Floyd is probably the smartest like I think athlete in history when it comes to money. This man, what? bro, are you, are, <laughs> what? are you, bro, are you actually dumb? He's the only, per, like, he's one of the only people in boxing history who said, all right, you see all these promoters that, bro, you don't know how boxing works. If there's a fight, you got to cut the check for the fighters who get the least, actually. You have the promotion. You have to have contracts with the people that, that are hosting the fights, like HBO, Showtime. Mm-hmm. There's so many things you have to cut. This man said, bro, F all that. I'm making my own promotion. All the, I'm, I'm directly oh, that's negoti- like TMT or whatever. Yeah, he, I'm negotiating directly with Showtime, and I'm like, I'm having a deal with them. And the promotion side, I'm making money, and then I'm making checks of being a fighter as well. That's why when they showed when he was at like when he was fighting, he was number one in sports when it came to money because no one was making money with him. No boxer will ever reach that unless they are like. Don't you with think that's also sponsor. partly because boxing makes so much money though? Yeah, but boxing makes so much money, but there's so much you have to cut. Like a boxer doesn't make that much. No, no, I know they get a huge oh, cut. Oh, so by cutting but... off them. Yeah, there's no cuts. Like he doesn't have like okay, let's say he fights, right? The only money he really has to cut like and it's not even that is cuz he gets money from it is he has to give like a percentage to Showtime who's like the network. But the network is giving he's in a contract with the network to hold like he's like the the, the network's something like, "All right, I'll pay you this much cuz they usually just go to the promoters. I'll pay you this much for a 10 fight deal." So like for the 10 next 10 fights I'll show your fight on our, you. You're able. Your fight will be on our network. Okay, but that makes him the smartest. I feel like any. Other yes. Thing. No. There yeah, is that's not. What I'm saying, bro. There isn't a boxer that's done that. Yeah, but they don't. No, have not the to money. say this again, but I will not put the word smartest next to someone who can't read. Bro, but bro, okay. people be saying that this man can read. Come on. No. What but, about the maybe? Pieces? Okay. Full no, sentences. Maybe stop, not. I'm not talking about smartest in terms of high IQ. I'm talking about smartest. No, in terms I know. Of I know. I know. I know. He is. But even then, he is. He is. Okay. Okay. But it's because he has the capital to do that, right? 
but he's he still, can turn them down because he has money. Also, no, but he's, he's not the one thinking of this shit. He has people thinking it for that's him. That's true. You rich, you got hella people. No, the but scenes. the thing is, even if even if like you do have these people saying this to do it, to to say to do it is one thing, and actually doing is a, he's the only one that's been able to do it. And no, it wasn't only because capital. Because when he started doing it, he of course he was at his peak, but he wasn't like making the money like he was when he started fighting like bigger names. He did it like midway his career because there was a guy. There's a guy, a big huge name in boxing. This is mad boring, but his name Bob Arum. He's one of the biggest promoters. Mm-hmm. He's one that he promotes for Fury, Tyson Fury, like a bunch of other mm-hmm. boxers. And he said, Bob Arum is cutting all this money from me. I'm going to move away. So he took whatever small capital invested himself. The man was in the negative at one point and invested in himself. And then he was able to build like money team promotions and do his own thing and make a bunch of money. That's that's unheard of in the boxing industry. Boxing industry, there's so many shady loopholes. You got to, bro, you got to pay like the commission who have like WBC, IBF, the WBA. Like, there's so many commissions. That's why there's so many different votes that you have to pay as well. Like, so many people get cut of this check that you're not even making that much money. This man said, I'm I'm doing away with all that and just promoting myself. That's, okay, but I have a question. That's he's crazy. number one smart with this money. With okay, how about this? Who's he's one of the smartest. Then? Who's well, this, number two then? Probably Tiger before he fucked it up. Oh. Mm. Bro, I have watched his, Tiger's documentary is insane. This man said, like, because the thing is, like, this man is, like, a prodigy. His dad was saying, like, bro, you're going to be, like, the next Gandhi. You're going to be doing all this because... The cause... next Gandhi? But, no, but listen to his reasoning. Hell? No, listen to his reasoning. This was before he started making... starving making... before matches? No, no, the reason why he was talking about was, like, why... In terms of, like, before Tiger, one of the most, like, segregated sports was golf. Golf from the beginning has been a whites only. Mm-hmm. He couldn't even play in courses when he was starting off because they did not allow him to because he was black. Yeah. Right? So his dad said, look... Yeah, when did he start? He started like, bro, he's been, he was, he, his dad made him play golf when he was three. His dad, he would see, he would be four years old, three years old. And his, he said, instead of going to like, like do kids can go play games. His mom would sit him in front of his dad hitting golf balls. He would just watch his dad hit golf balls at the age of four. Yeah. So then what happened is that was like, he would make like motivational tapes and, and talk to his, in his ear and be like, you're going to be like the next Ghani because he, and stuff like that. Cause he was saying, you're a, you're a black, you're, you're black, you're Asian and you have other stuff like in you. Like mix wise, and, <laughs> Yo, what no, that sounds, other stuff in you. No, that stuff's weird. But he's like his mom's. His mom's not only like fully Asian. So he's saying like he got drafted by the blacks. Oh my gosh, bro. He's not black. He said he he, he, he made some like he. That's why people in the documentary were getting mad because he said I'm not black. He's made like he's like some like. Oh, you said that? No, he said I'm like I'm black Asian, black Asian something like it's all the different. Bro. He's all of that. <laughs> But basically, his dad was That's like, wild. his dad was like, you are a black, uh, uh, you're black Asian, and you're gonna break into this extremely white dominated sport, and you're going to take over and be the biggest art ever seen. You're gonna unify like races and people. You're gonna be like that. That was his dad's thought. Then when when Tiger got older, he's like, bro, like this man won every amateur tournament there could, and Nike signed me where he became a pro, and the first was like. Some people might hate me because of my race, but I'm taking over the game. That was his first Nike commercial. Nike signed to him, and they did that. His dad and media trained him from the age of three. Mm-hmm. Like he was doing all this stuff to be prepared, and then when he started going for his own his own sports game, of course, a lot of people have done that. But Tiger Woods PGA, like, not, this is not money though. No, what Tiger Woods PGA, like Nike, the Nike contract he had, all the deals he had with like the the balls in like the club they uh, that like other companies, because like Nike only had the rights for some like I think his image, not like only his golf stuff like the cereal the food like bro that man made so much money i think he was number two behind floyd the entire time that man was making like Damn. he said at one point like he wasn't a real person you would say because he said like every time he's fought in the spotlight he was representing so many companies he's a brand he's not a real <laughs> yeah. person Damn. he's a walking billboard yeah he said like that's why he was like going off the rails because like he can't go out in public and like slip up as a normal human being because he, that's a, that's a hit Shut on his brand yeah. But he was taking like every deal at one point, and, it, and that's why him and his dad like were far apart. And he said his biggest regret because he died with like his dad died Damn. without him talking to him anymore. Damn, that's crazy. So he, he's he's like one of like the pioneers, and he's one of the greatest when it comes to money. For him to do all that shit with those women. Okay, I put him, I put him ahead of what's his name then. I don't, after this man's talking about like he can't read, now I can't even put him above, bro. <laughs> I gotta put Tiger first now. I ain't gonna lie. Exactly. Not him being reading, <laughs> not him being able to read doesn't mean he's not the smartest. Yeah. Not I'm gonna say something is like horrible. Bro, with all like, that money. R. Kelly, man. R. Kelly couldn't write and read music, and he made a bunch of hits, even though he's that motherfucker is a horrible human being. But he was, he made music like, and he couldn't you read and write music. Separate them. No, of course, of course, that man's a human, horrible human being. I'm talking about really quick. He, he's a very talented. He's person. very talented, but he couldn't yeah. read or write music or read and write in general. But he still made all. R. Kelly music. couldn't read or write. No. Damn. But now he can. Well, I don't know. Right? Reading and writing 
something. So it relates, so, relates, so it's like relates. somebody learned and somebody else didn't. I ain't gonna see you know, you know what it was? You know what it was? He learned because he was hanging out with a bunch of people that were just learning how to read oh too. Oh my god. Right? Your likes. <laughs> Oh, no, but yeah, okay, yeah, but like same with the, Michael, right? Same thing. Yeah, Michael's like crazy. Also I'm trying a bunch to think of about young people too. All right, Michael Jordan. Not oh, Jackson, okay. Dude, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I was like, Michael was hanging out with kids. I was like, what? Everyone's hanging out with kids. Know. You know, he, it was the opposite with Michael Jordan. What's that thing that Alex had in his house? Oh, nah, nah. Just what? Is that, a, is that a real quote? No. Oh. It's like a meme, and then they just attach like, it. No. I was like, fuck them kids. Oh. Yeah, from the, what was it, like, Chris Paul basketball camp or whatever? Yeah. It's oh, amazing. no. It was because the story is that, like, Chris Paul, and so it was a Jordan camp, yeah. and Chris Paul's like a Jordan athlete. I don't know if he still is, but Chris Paul's like, hey, if you make, uh, if you miss one of these shots, uh, we'll buy, like, shoes for every kid in here, and that motherfucker did not miss a single shot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the you meme, for ball? that's where the meme started, like, I'm not, fuck them yeah, kids. but that's I'm trying crazy. to think, like, other people in sports. And then we can move into general celebrities, but yeah, yeah, because I want to talk about that too. I want to talk about the, the the general idea of the celebrity lifestyle and how people get very obsessed with it, right? Mm-hmm. Especially with specific celebrities, like standing kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, standing is like maybe I think maybe celebrity culture. No, not even just standing. I think maybe be- one step below standing, where it's still I because th- the people who are one step below standing are the ones that are feeding in to all these different you know, businesses that are, are propping up these celebrities, right? The people are like, oh my God, fucking Rick Ross just bought another Lamborghini. Bro, don't even get me started. When I went to the DR, bro, every conversation I had with people was them talking about uh, El Alfa buying a Bugatti. I was like, bro, how the Who fuck does this impact your life? Like that? I don't understand. No, but my, my theory is like, because think a lot of like- But no, it's the connection of like being, right? Like he used to be from here and look where he's at now. It's but like, how does him having but that's a Bugatti- different. That's like, different. It's more like okay, if you if you knew him personally, or he, if he's from the same. But there's a connection town, of country. Yeah, no, right? if he's from the same town or the same country, of course you're gonna root for him. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying there's a difference between rooting for someone and being there's obsessed a, there's with everything. There's like a do. worshiping of like, like celebrities. And my theory, yeah. and I was talking, I was reading like people talking about this, like as things are becoming more secular, like there's like a theory that people find other ways to like. I'm not spiritual, but try to latch on the thing and they say like celebrity culture is like what is like a little bit of what's taking over what could be like the next thing people go to like the, even if they are religious or not hey, one but celebrity already managed what, to do that they, they what one celebrity already managed to get his own religion going okay okay we know maradona. maradona that's something completely different though. by the way honestly you could say maradona was smarter than fucking uh floyd because he once, was not smarter he spent half of his no no no, no 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 this is a head, joke this boy. is a joke this is a joke because the the religion for maradona will live on and he's already dead Wait, this is a real religion though. Like people it's like the people third, it's the third, I think third or fourth biggest religion in Argentina. That's they right. legitimately pray. They they pray that they, this they, they I think there's like holy ones. Like the day he was born, the day he beat England with like the hand of God and stuff. What the yeah. Hell? Yeah, there's stuff like that. Like there's different there's they have different some brujeria things. type shit going on too. Yeah, there's <laughs> it's like he he's 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 probably the most you know, it, in instead life. of instead of doing the, the bread and wine thing, it's just coke. Okay. It's just one line. <laughs> I think I think really like quickly he's he's like a really good example I mean an extreme example but celebrity culture like yeah and I think I think like celebrity culture is kind of dumb but I also feel like people are trying to fill a void of like bro my life sucks I hate my job <laughs> no but honestly I hate no my, you're right you're I hate right, my you're right. I hate my job I, there's income inequality at a, a rate we haven't seen since like because we're oil barons like. We we hate Fucking we don't like burger. life and stuff like that. I'm gonna attach like my my whole self worth or whatever to celebrities. Like bro, when this man LeBron lost, the LeBron haters was like, bro, this man don't got a bag, don't got this, don't got that. I'm like, bro, what what LeBron what LeBron say? Hate is equal, almost equal, bro. Hate hate's so pretty bad too. Hate you don't know. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah it bad. is pretty bad too. I mean, hate drives like everything in my opinion. Like hate another hate another country funds wars. Like hate fear i mean that's back to the boxing thing yeah right that's how they sell the fights of course yeah 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 because the thing is is like if if you're already like they're not because the thing is with boxing is they're not trying to pertain to the hardcore fans if you're a hardcore fan you're gonna watch boxing regardless Mm -hmm. if you're a casual and you just see two people with no emotional connection to them why are you gonna watch it 
but now you have a they Logan create Paul that. that you hate. Or, I mean, they either create it, they create or, it or they create genuine. beef between them. You're like, yeah, oh yeah. shit, I kind of like this guy a little bit more. I want to see him be, uh, beat the other guy. Yeah, it's it's real, it's real or fake, but I mean, that's what, but people, oh, gotta, yeah. people gotta make money. At the end of the day, it's money. Money is driven everything. Celebrity culture, people standing, celebrity culture, all everything is driven by money. So it's like, like that's why it's, I think celebrity culture is extremely dumb. But people are generally invested about what celebrities are doing in, in their private life. I don't I don't care. Unless yeah. unless they're not moving like R. Kelly moving like just mad movements, I don't What's, care. Hey, what, what do you guys think is what do you guys think is worse? When people get obsessed over someone buying a, a new fucking house or going on a vacation to a very expensive place, or when they get obsessed over them getting into a new relationship with some other celebrity, what's worse? Ladder, probably the ladder because uh, that's more personal yeah i guess what do you think? i agree with you because sometimes even if they do kind of show it off like oh shit i don't know let's, let's pick a fucking kardashian for example yeah some kardashian is dating some other basketball player mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they're showing off the relationship but people get obsessed with that yeah. that's okay, still that's personal a- to an extent like they're they, still in a they relationship are the, they are the prime example of celebrity culture yeah. Yeah. I. The. It, it, That's why this place we're at right now kind of blew up a little bit. Yeah, because we showed up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, the, no, the, the DR, yeah. the DR blew up a little bit when they went on their little, like, freaking Kim Noah Kardashian show in the DR, and people wanted to go to the DR. To places that you can't even afford to. Stay Bro, into. and then like, mm-hmm. like either like, uh, plastic surgeons have been coming out and talking about like all these Instagram influencers want to look like Kim. All these people that do this want to look like Kim. The long-term bro, effects on that stuff. Is at crazy. the end of the day, bro, I don't know how black women do it. Because if I saw these all these women getting surgeries to look like black women, and then they're told and black you women are ugly, the same women back with bro, their kids. Like, hell bro. no, bro. That's what I don't do. When they be when black, when black women, not even angry, because they just are passionate about what they talk about, it and it's confused as anger. Yeah. I'm like, what you? But what do you want? If you're telling them they're ugly, and then this woman's getting bigger lips, fuller lips. Sticking their cup in, sticking their lips in cups for seven hours, risking death. Bro, that was the nastiest challenge I've ever seen in my life, so bro. Then they get like butt fillers. I don't even like how that looks. Filling looks their, terrible. Filling their butt with like, I know you don't. But I'm, filling, not, <laughs> they're not gonna get into you, boy. You know? Filling their, filling their butts with concrete, bro, to get a bigger butt. Concrete. Yeah, there was like yeah, a, there's yeah. a, or there's, like paper mache. Paper mache. Like there's yeah, there's a woman that had concrete in her ass. Like oh god. They're doing all these things to look more like a black woman, but like Kim made it cool because she's exotic. So I don't know. Yeah. Why they're bro darkening their skin? I don't know, bro. It's, it's just like a whole celebrity culture. I think so, everything bro. that comes with blackness except blackness, pretty much. Yo, yeah. Well, I don't know who the said features, it. The physical features, the physical features. I don't know who said it, but everybody want to be a N word, so they have to be an N word. That's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> that's probably the goat. I mean, it's, that, that's 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 real. That's, that's probably real. the goat, Paul Mooney. But yeah, like you see with like rappers, the lows. Yeah. Like SNL did a great skit talking about like these they're like these kids that have three billion streams and they come on talk on a, on a rap conversation and they ask them like, yo where you learning about hip hop from they're like TikTok <laughs> and they're like what what you doing about rap you're like the rap is when you yeet like if she come when she put that thing on you're not gonna yeet bro you're not gonna yeet <laughs> yeet 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 I'm like and it's <laughs> so true like uh, and then they ask them who's your rap inspirations uh Fallout Boy bro I don't even like oh, Tupac bro. like that like that's a that, Tupac like, overrated. Yeah. That's why, like, real quick, like, before I used to be like, nah, but you gotta let people. But I, I think gatekeeping certain things is actually good. Cause, yeah, like, because it gets diluted. Bro, when you, we talk about, like. I think it's our, hard, though. Yeah, of course it's hard, but I think there has to be, like, some way we do it. Because I'm gonna give you another example. There's a thing now where, like, oxtail is going up insane prices in certain places because white people now think it's, like, the whole thing, like, avocado on toast. Mm-hmm. So it's driving up the, the, the cost of this <laughs> of thing. Avocado. Of avocados, of course, avocado? and ox- oh, no, no, no. no, so like avocado toast is like a huge thing. Like you will see it on mm-hmm. every influence. Like oh, I'm I'm having my iced coffee and my avocado toast for breakfast. Cause yeah, like, because it's healthy. Thin. And then like for example, I a mean, lot it's of not bad, but... like a lot of people are like, oh my god, I ate Jamaican food. I love oxtail. So like the price of oxtail is going up. White people aren't making oxtail. But then you what leave, what you leave behind is like the people who've been having it for like centuries who buy it for cheap because it's a lot of all this stuff that is becoming popular. If we're being honest, is from poor communities or back in slavery where it was like the scraps that they took they, they took and made into a thing or poor people are always innovating they take whatever they have or whatever money they have and they make it into a like delicious or like cool thing and then now 
why people have it they're gonna what's gonna ha- end up happening that people have been predicting is like also for example is gonna raise in price so much that the poor people who made this thing a thing are not even gonna be able to have access to it anymore mm. mm. so they it's can't like this access. weird this weird vicious circle. yeah so like okay. it's the same thing with rap like rap is becoming extremely diluted like now with like horrible rap yeah. i mean yeah. there's a reason why because more people have access to microphones and soundcloud and everything to be able to make rap mm-hmm. but there's a lot of people that make it and their music's not good or just a lot of stuff but, but there has to be there that yeah there just has to be like i don't know how you do it but there might there might have to be gatekeeping especially because like black people even people minority they're not really giving the mainstream limelight that white people have when it comes to like jobs in terms of like if you want to hear about black experiences like we've been saying people go to kanye they go to celebrities they go to artists but white people need to hear about politics they go to the politicians they go to the lawyers they go to the professors and like that's not luxury offered to black people so like the only thing that's what j cole was saying like it's so much pressure sometimes yeah, yeah and it is so like for black people though the the we don't there's not the thing that main white stream mainstream america cares about is sport our sport black people's sports black people's like influence on music fashion and everything else but then everything else when it comes to like so politics is like demeaning yeah it's like they, they, it's like put to the side so that's why the things that these things that black people have innovated and created because that's the only thing that they were allowed to like at the time um and they're still trying to break through the other things has to be gatekeep gate kept in a, in a certain way just like because they're gatekeeping like these positions of power these other positions where we can't even get there and then they also get they're, they're we're not gatekeeping this because we want to be different to them we want to be like oh no we want everybody to be inclusive but then we everybody's inclusive and they come in they take it and there's nothing left for them for poor, poor black people. And make it worse sometimes. Yeah, so it's like... But, I mean, it's a normal process, and it's really... It, it's kind of natural for that to happen. It's natural to happen, but it's not natural in the opposite way that, like, black people are not... Black people and people of color, that's like a term you want to use, but minorities aren't given the same opportunity of that to be able to go into these other spaces they haven't been able to, but mm-hmm. white people and people that have money are given access, access to, to it because problem. everyone we the people are like oh i don't want to be like the oppressor and not and not let people in so then they give them an the opportunity to come in and then that's like how you're saying that's natural happens but it doesn't happen in the reverse where people can then who are poor are able to go into these spaces and then take from them as this well man is good facts right now oh my God. <laughs> no it's just like i don't, I don't want to interrupt yeah no, i don't know it's just like i guess like the whole three four months of where I'm, i've been working at yeah. like you kind of just see it you kind of see like oh yeah we're not gonna pertain to like Mexicans or, or, or Hispanics or like other people because generally we, we know that they might not vote. So we have to go after like white voters or donors who actually have money. So mm, so like if so it's, it's gonna, gonna happen, we wanna try to guide it in a way that's gonna be helpful then. Yeah, because like if they're they're like a lot I think like the logic of thinking not to say like a lot, but it's like if we think progressive movement or whatever, this is like the best thing for us. The only way, I mean, in their eyes, the only way we can do it is by getting people elected that think like us. So we have to get the most amount of people that vote to do that. So by doing that, we got to target white Americans. Because they say yeah. black people only, like, there's, like, the general stereotypes or general idea. There's, like, a whole, like, other topic about, like, allyship and uh, stuff like that. But, yeah, pretty Coming much. up later in season three. I mean, should, should, should happen. But, yeah, it's, yeah. like. So you kind of just see like luxuries that are offered to rich. I mean, I'm not going to say white people too, because it's also rich, like rich minorities, but just people to be able to move in these spaces that doesn't work in the opposite where we can't really move in those spaces. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, there's a lot, there's a lot of there, a lot of things there that I'm delving into, but yeah, that, that's what I think about that. It's like culture to wrap it up. I think it's dumb. Yeah. I think it's a distraction to actually fix the problems we have in our society and just be like, here, I'm going to give you a shiny toy to look at <laughs> while, yeah. we, while we keep taking from your pockets. So that's just how I think about it. But ignorance is bliss at the end of the day. Like, these people it's are happy. Yeah. yeah, these people yeah. are probably happy because, like, if, if, you, if you don't have to see the problem in society, your life is way easier because you're not always thinking about how do you fix this or how you do that. So, no, like, no, because this honestly just blocks the problem out for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it acts, they have, it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's, it's like, I think it's just one of those things, it's like celebrity culture. I, I don't, I really don't care if, like, what car they're driving or whatever, what they're doing. Like, good for them. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of people hurting, a lot of people struggling. But that's not going to get the lime of day or, like, the shine because we care more about 
for someone who's driving who they're dating like <laughs> and vice versa I'll, it'll probably be I would never want to be a celebrity I, I would never want to be a celebrity I feel like that crap nah. is horrible mm-hmm. bro, I can't go to my kids go eat I can't yeah can't, that's normal shit yeah bro like I can't even be in my own house because people are like on the lawn paparazzi like, is fraught bro They'll, those people are crazy bro. those people I they're in bushes that, yeah, I'd be embarrassed to be a paparazzi bro no. Your job, you? they probably need to pay back. I don't give a fuck if they get bro, paid. Let, you, bro, your job is to look into other people's lives Yo, in I a think, very invasive I way. I think that's Just a very like pictures. demeaning way of yeah. thinking, in my opinion, because you don't know, bro. If someone what? is, if someone has to feed like feed their kids, bro, and no, no, no bro, don't stop. bring that argument. Don't no, bring no. that argument about paparazzi. Bro, bro, need to make money, bro. These bro, people clearly. I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say you're a person who loves photography and you went to a photographer for, for college, mm-hmm. and the passion you pursue is not making money yet. But oh, bro, you gotta pay student bill or student loan debt, or you gotta you're trying to start a family, and you gotta pay for it. Are you gonna take the the road that you're on right now that's not making any money, or are you gonna like whatever? I gotta make money, and I'm gonna become a paparazzi and start making morally, money. Morally, it might hit you later. The on thing is, look, morally, look, it look, might look. be wrong, but yeah. at the end of the day, people gotta you pay their bills. You have certain standards. Everyone has certain standards. Moral standards, for example. All right, right? which worse? My moral standards, in my personal case, would prevent me from getting to a point where I say, "Oh, I'm gonna go take pictures." Like, but at the end of the day, so you would your let morals from your brain. I have to find another way. Yeah, but your morals have, have to come into question when you're pushed to the brink and you gotta pay for something. You saying. got a family. You I understand. I understand. But at least look, coming from like an example from within my family, there's ways around it. There's ways you can get out of it. Me, per- I'm not. I'm not speaking for other people. I'm saying me okay. personally. Me personally. And I know I can't show that unless I've been in a situation like that. Yeah. But me personally, I wouldn't get to that point. I don't. Who's worse to you, a drug dealer or a paparazzi? Mm, that's a good question. What kind of drugs are we talking about? And uh, I think I think they're anything not... that's not like I don't consider like weed like that. So like cocaine, heroin, PCP, all that stuff. Those kind of drugs. You know, what? I consider the people who become drug dealers being more pressed into that kind of a job. Than people who are paparazzis. You know? Yeah, I get what you're saying. So you're giving them the upper hand. What he's saying it's is like, like, what he's saying is like, like let's the say the thing is like, okay, he, here's the main difference though. A drug dealer has a much clearer negative effect on society, right? Yeah. They're propagating a drug problem. Yep. A paparazzi is they're just taking pictures. Obviously, it's negatively affecting the the life of the person whose pictures are taking. Yeah. But that's a very and small. Ours. ours? The overconsumption that comes from directly the result from popular. I mean, yeah, but that's that's even more diluted. Yeah. Right. To me, I don't really care. But to me, I look at more. I guess because the policy I bring is I care more about like the systems that allow these jobs to happen. A drug dealer doesn't just become a drug dealer because like because he wants to. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. if I'm telling you right now, most people if they could if they could make good money doing legal stuff, this they drug would. stuff wouldn't be a, a issue. A lot of the time, it's just like. Imagine you're in a in a very poverty like poverty stricken place and like you try to you 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 go to a school that's like a prison. Not just drugs, any kind of illegal. Yeah, thing. yeah. Like let's say you go to a school and your school you don't see an outlook. It's just you just have to be there to for your parents not to get controlled by the government and it's a prison. Uh, it's a school to prison pipeline. Like there's no college for you. Mm-hmm. So you get out of you get out of college and now you gotta make money. Are you gonna go that's work cool. minimum wage to now try to get stuff while maybe your parents start kicking you out or you gotta start doing stuff? Or, or you can't even find a job because the economy is shit. Yeah, Dave Chappelle did a sketch on that. It was, it was funny as hell. This guy was like getting awards for best for burger flipper or whatever. But he was <laughs> all the month, but he couldn't feed his family. And my his wife was like, just do something illegal, bro, because we need money. <laughs> so those people are forced, kind of forced into it, even though society wants to be like, oh, they're Yo, horrible speaking, and bad. Speaking bro, of there's, money? There's, there's systems in place that are even worse than these people that even allow for people to be this poor or even like allow drugs to come into the country. Cause they get their cut too. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a Bro, whole, like that, it's a that, whole several tier system. Remember that boat, uh, by Chase Bank that had like hella cocaine and drugs on it, and now it just disappeared. Like, no, Bro, no we were we <laughs> we literally have like FBI documents and CIA documents of the government using drug or using drug money to buy weapons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the fucking Iran Contra. Yeah. Was so like for them to now be like drug dealers are bad. All right, bro. Your own government is like yeah. The dude came on in front of Congress. The the plane driver. He's like yeah. I mean, I used to drop off the drugs and guns, and people are like, oh, why would you do that? Yeah, but bro, there's a game like we're saying. America's too open, bro. African countries not doing that, bro. They leaving it quiet. Everything's going under the table. Everyone suffers equally. I don't know. 
everyone suffers equally. I mean, Africa isn't really Africa. Sadly, not, okay, not everyone. I'm talking about yeah, the people. Right, the people. Right, right. But at the end of the day, low, low key, like Africa is a little bit different. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but Africa doesn't really have control on their future because they have. They keep so many they keep selling it to the Chinese, yeah. bro. There's so many colonial they keep powers. Selling it to the Chinese. Colonial, what do they call it? Colonization number two. Yeah, it's it's modern, modern day colonization. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's not like. It's not like a thing where you where, sell your assets. Yeah, it's not a really a thing where they can really like control, bro. It's like a thing like the, it's not to it's an like extent, the, bro. Some okay, of course, of course. Yeah. But it's kind of like a little bit to like the drug dealer dynamic where mm-hmm. you're pushed to where like, bro, I need prosperity in my country. And how is this? Like, I need prosperity. Who's saying that? I mean, the, the people the running the country. No, it's not the president. Because the, no, president, the president is always a fucking the dictator. Take okay. the no, 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 no. The people who are legitimately trying to run the country well, right? Okay. Which is who? Ministers usually. Let's just say hypothetical. There's like the, the people want to see prosperity for like themselves, mm-hmm. and they're in and they're in a country that's not necessarily, let's say, for example, well off. Let's we're talking about those people. They want prosperity. So how do you do it? How do you raise like the 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 betterment of the country? Because if you raise the betterment of the country, for example, in this case, I'm talking about in the general. Maybe it raises up for everyone, not the president. President is people like they 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 say, yo, I'm gonna if I become president, it's because I'm gonna get my cut. Put my people on these jobs. Put my people on this and this. How do you do it? Mm-hmm. It's a, it's way harder because then you also have imperialist, imperialist forces like China offers you yo hey because the thing is I'm yeah, yeah, give, yeah. they, they want the- investors right and China comes in and says look we'll invest X amount of money for this port that's gonna bring in a, a huge amount of trade into your country but hey we're gonna own the port after you after we're done building it because we're gonna be the ones building it too yeah and they say oh bet you're building the port. We're getting some of the benefits of this. It's a good deal. Yeah. It's a great deal. Mm-hmm. But yeah, not stuck in. Bro, and it's not even China. It's it's the West. It's, it's more. No, it's mostly now. It's mostly China. China is running. No, no, China. China is no, China, China, of course. But like, it those, used to be. No, you know the. You know got the. You know who has the playbook for that though. It is the Western world. The IMF. <laughs> it used to be. Bro, oh, IMF. Damn. IMF okay, would come in and be like, here. You need some money. You need some money. All right, this is the loan we're gonna give you, bro. The Bolivian people just got out of a loan that that was taken by the lady who got who, who was in a who was in I'm not gonna say the the c word but why she was no not not the C-word. not your yeah, word yeah I'm talking about the one of all why she, how she got into office but well, basically they signed an the IMF loan uh mm-hmm. the c word you I'm not gonna say it. it's when the government okay whatever <laughs> what bro just say it. no all right whatever so like they signed the IMF bleep it loan. out what does it rhyme with yeah bleep it out just say two. It. Okay, 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 so okay. they they signed that the lady in office signed the IMF loan mm-hmm. Like that they that they were gonna reinvest and then the government that took over after because they won the election was like Mother, you signed this loan that's about to fuck the country cancel that loan <laughs> They gave the money back to them and say we'll deal with it on our own Yeah, we'll Cause that's the original that's the original playbook. Yeah, I mean one of Latin America's longest enemies is or like long-term enemies has been the fucking IMF The IMF is horrible for it bro. They're there is a there is a guy who's talking about he released the I re- recommend this book um it's like it's called the the confessions of a ec- the economic hitman and he was basically describing about how like since Vietnam and like even like more so after like the stuff happening in the Middle East war like war in the sense of get, getting documented is bad for business like if we invade a country we're like damn are we the bad people and stuff like that so they say the way that people are taking over countries now is not by war it's by debt. Yeah, so he yeah. said the way that you hide it is you go into oh, these you countries can't pay and pay back, or we're yeah. gonna do this, this, and this. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. gotcha. So that's like the new yeah. thing he was talking about in his book, and he taught and he gave detail about like how you take over a country by giving them loans and debt, which is why the IMF is like in theory helping these countries out, but they're giving them loans that they the the, the repay is you know they can't pay they back. can't pay back. So that's what slavery. China's doing now. Yeah, China got the playbook from my IMF, bro. Like it's <laughs> they, they straight don't, up don't 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 get it. Borrow that shit, word for word. Bar for bar, bar for bar. They said. You know who was doing it before him? Or before China though? What? Soldier boy. Yeah, Soldier Boy was for sure doing this. Soldier Boy, first. he's the first one ever. Soldier Boy was the first person on the moon. Soldier Boy was the first person to try to to, to make him tell. I'm the first rapper. He says this man talk every day. First rapper to have a Lamborghini phone. What y'all talk about? And there's a video of him using a Lamborghini phone. Yo, first person. A what phone? A Lamborghini phone. So Lamborghinis used to make like custom phones or some shit. I don't know what it was called or custom Damn. skins. And he posts like first person with Lamborghini phone. And then he had like. The date on Insta where he when he had it, Dude. and then he's like first person to get uh jewelry from this like place or whatever. I think it's like called like Icebox, and now everyone gets it there. And there's yeah. a video of him walking in and getting oh, jewelry. <laughs> I'm like on a flip phone recording. <laughs> uh, 
He's like, I'm the first one to do every first one to wear an extra large white tee, and then you he got the receipt of the first white tee ever bought in the Legendary. history. Legendary, bro. That man, that man is different, 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 bro. For real. Yeah, Soldier Boy's probably like, bro. That man's probably done everything first. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> oh, he probably did OnlyFans first. Yeah, bro, bro freaking OnlyFans. Nah, he probably <laughs> Soulja did. Soldier Boy on OnlyFans. He probably like before he dropped uh, Superman that prank that he probably had like. You want to listen to a song first? Uh, go to OnlyFans. Oh my god. Oh god. Yo, you know what? Speaking of OnlyFans, because I just remember something. We know we we're talking about people doing illegal shit because they need to make money and they're yeah. forced into that. You kind of have that same argument for people who do OnlyFans, you know? Mm-hmm. Especially people who are trying to pay for college. Yeah, I mean, I feel the same way. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not judging no one that does it, bro. If, like, with, with all the student loan debt and all that's happening, bro, and you, if you want to become, like, do stuff at school and you need OnlyFans paid off, bro, go do it. It's just, like, the only thing is, can you live with, like, Family and society judging you. That's the only thing. Yeah. But yeah. if that's not a big deal and you want to hustle, bro, I don't care. Do whatever you gotta do. If, like, I'm, I'm not gonna. And this one's not way. like doesn't have those negative effects that a drug dealer has. You're not proper getting a drug problem. It still may have some mental negative effects. Maybe mental. Like what? I don't. Oh no! Like being able to be emotional with someone and love someone because like you're for, so. Oh, used, for yourself. Yeah, you're like always used to like yeah. calling every single one baby and everything. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's like not genuine. That, that's on you though. Yeah. That's a negative effect. That's, that's a negative effect. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't. I don't no, know. To the like world? society, to the world, yeah. I mean, possibly. I, I don't know. I don't know. Nah, maybe. It's a, it's a stress reliever, so maybe not. <laughs> stress reliever. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, it just depends. Like, uh, you God. gotta make the bread. You gotta make the bread, bro. If people be getting exploited in all facts, just be your own boss. I don't really care. Be your own boss. Yeah. But with that, we're gonna have the the fan favorite, Oscar winning. Emmy nominated. He got, he got all of them. And Grammy nominated. Yeah. Grammy winning. I don't even know what else we won, but we won a lot. Ballon d'Or. Um, International awards, we got them too. Yeah, yeah. International yeah. awards. We got the Burger Sundance Festival. Awards. Sundance Festival for mm. uh, the Pod movie, which is like this. Mm-hmm. We, like they're watching it right now as it's being made, and they said it's like the best. So we got the Sundance Festival award. We got all the all the awards. But yeah, we're gonna have our we're gonna have recommendations and counselors corner. So. You want to go with recommendations first? You want to start? Yeah, I got you. Um, my recommendation is this song by Sinead. Sinead? Harnett? I think that's how you say her name. Um, she is a British artist, and the song is like this. Really, really, good, really, really good song. So, yeah. Check it out. Nice. Mine's going to be another podcast. I've been listening to podcasts a lot lately, like it's you know? Maybe, it's not maybe Final Cut, so... No, I, I'm gonna say, it, I'm gonna say, it, dude. Right. Conan O'Brien needs a friend. If you like Conan, cause that motherfucker's funny. <laughs> Watch okay. his, or listen to his podcast. It's really good. He always has really high profile guests. He just had an episode with Barack Obama. So, uh, let me be clear. Uh, <laughs> gingers do not have souls. I think we have Obama next week, right? Yeah, we got Obama next week. Yeah, next week. Right. He's not coming. He's not coming on the show. The amount of times I've trash talked Obama. <laughs> <laughs> He's not coming on the show. But yeah. I've heard good things about that podcast as well. About the Conan O'Brien, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, for me, my recommendation is just gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna say one of my favorite summer songs. I was literally just playing it. It's probably "Don't Be Late" by Drake and Sway Lee. I really like that song, especially because Sway Lee just I was it was on my mind because he was making fun of Soldier Boy for saying he did everything, which he actually does do everything. So I would that's that's my song. I'd be "Don't Be Late" with uh, Drake and Sway Lee. And then nice. for Counselor's Corner. Yeah, we, yeah. we had it switched. Yeah, but, but I... See, the we'll thing is, we switched it for season three. Y'all didn't know that. Yeah, with those great recommendations, it is now time for Counselor's Corner. All right, what advice do you have for everyone? That's it. A narrow focus can reveal big results. So repeat zoom that. In. Repeat a that. narrow repeat focus. That. Repeat that. A narrow zoom focus. in on my man. Zoom in on my man. Zoom narrow, in. Narrow, focus. narrow focus can reveal big results. Sheesh. Zoom in on something. Sheesh. I'm not doing that shit, bro. Sheesh. All right, bro, what you got? All right, mine. Beat me. It's practical. I don't know. Mine was it? I know every. It's practical. I know everyone here can use this shit. When you go abroad, and you gotta get money, make sure you can pay it in a, like at least four different ways because that way you avoid getting into any sort of altercation. Okay. Interesting. Get. Dude. Get yourself a debit card, get yourself a credit card, get yourself cash in dollars and in the in the currency of the country you're going in. And then there's not gonna be any problems, all right? Everyone's coming from the shit. Personal experience or friends, it's coming or from anger or maybe you know, 
No, I'm not saying anything. Cameraman. No, I'm not saying anything, buddy. Yeah, that's crazy. Gee, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> uh, mine's gonna be two because I don't think they're like. I don't have any philosophy, like anything philosophical right now. It's gonna be two. First is uh for you uh heavy drinkers, electrolyte replenishment drinks. You need that, like. So you're not waking up the next day and your head is banging like the soldier boy cranked that bass because you know he did everything first. He did he even built it bases first. So yeah. But anyways, yeah, get electrolyte drinks. And I would say for all my black people out here, I'm not saying no names, but like I've been seeing some ashy ass people and I can't have y'all. Y'all y'all are beautiful people. We gotta have lotion, lotion shit at all times. Nah, I'm not talking about Isaiah. I'm talking about just people. <laughs> I'm talking about people I just been seeing, but we can't can't go out like here. You already know you go to a foreign country, it's, it's issues because of your skin, bro. I ain't gonna lie. But if they're gonna see your skin, shine through. Shine through like your soul's going. Yes, That's man. It. All right. <laughs> I was trying to tie it back to coming to America, soul glow, but you know. You tried. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. I can't even do it, bro. Uh, all right, well. Yeah, go, go ahead. Thanks again for listening, guys, and thanks for watching. This is our special. very first video podcast. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed seeing our beautiful faces. So, yeah, catch Peace. you next time. Hope you enjoy season three. Thanks again. See ya. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Minority Report Podcast.